What's going on guys, CWG here, welcome to episode 21 on the Vault Hunters SMP. Did you know there's 21 total prefixes and suffixes? Interesting. Now, welcome back to another episode. How y'all doing today? Well, today is a day of the grind. I've collected four knowledge stars off camera. Well, and some knowledge essence that Coda sent me through the mailbox out there. Let's nom those down right now. This puts us three away from mechanism, so me and Code can both unlock it. How exciting. Also, as you can see, we're level 20 now. And at level 20, some interesting things happen. For instance, there's now tier two mobs that can spawn and they're pretty scary. Meanwhile, we got some mystery boxes we can open. We have 29 total, let's go. Come on, give me an Omega Pog, go. What did we get in that pile? We got four black opal, that's pretty good. Honestly, that's probably the best thing in here. <laughs> I can't believe two people on the server have gotten an Omega Pog already. In fact, Fuzzy got an Omega Pog before he even could make his first Pog. Like, what the heck? Oh, also, as you can see, I have spent my skill points. And I spent my skill points on unlocking Strength too. So let's go test out on our dummy how much damage we do now. Oh gosh, the dummy's like in the ores. Also, we have a bit of a problem with the ore attic. This is not all the ores we have. Like, for instance, let's just search up ore. Yeah. Like, we have over 140 Laramar, a whole bunch of Beniatite, and other ores. There's just simply not enough room in the ore attic. We're going to have to make something new to hold all these ores. So let me know in the comments. I want a creative idea of, like, a way to store a whole bunch of ores. Maybe, like, I build a giant table or something and put them all on the table. I don't know. Maybe we could, like, put the ores on the Bridge of Friendship. Uh, <laughs> let me know in the comments if you guys have any ideas. Oh, wait, I forgot. We were supposed to test out our damage on the dummies. See how easily I get distracted? Oh, also, I forgot to mention, I ended up rolling a sword even better than our two chains axe. It does more damage because it actually managed to roll a tier two damage roll. Yeah, 16 and a half. And it has the two chaining, and it's a sword with ex extra attack speed, so instead of only being able to crit on every other jump, with the sword you can crit on almost every jump if you're able to time it right. So yeah, this is gonna be really good. Let's test out how much damage we do on the dummy. A normal hit, 23 and a half. A crit, 35, wow. We're starting to pack in some damage now. You know, here's what we're gonna do. Since we need three more knowledge stars, I'm gonna have to run a lot of vaults and grind out some knowledge essence. I think we're gonna do a little bit of a live stream to grind out some resources. So I'll hop back in when the live stream is over. And just like that, I'm back from the live stream. Some fun things did happen during the stream. So let me roll you a clip of saving Peeporp from the vaults. When you die in the vaults, you leave a ghost behind and you can actually be rescued by fellow teammates. And that's exactly what we did. Roll the clip. Oh, look at his go body. Team. It's time Just to say the peeporp. <laughs> Do I need an empty hand? I got my oh, there we go. Look oh, at the chat. Perfect. We got yeah, you peep. Take your shield off. <laughs> we got peep. <laughs> hey, hey, Cod, Cod. I got a red scroll. Catch, yes. catch, catch. Are we no, going to play <laughs> past the peep? Peep, peep in Is the it? middle, past the peep. Right. Past the peep. I think. I'm going to throw up. I'm going to throw up. Ready, 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 go. You throw him around my soul. <laughs> I'm being rattled. All right, I think I threw it. Yeah. Yep, I got it. Hey. And because of that act of kindness to Peeporp, we have added another stick to the Bridge of Friendship, or I guess the, the Bridge of Woolship now. <laughs> the Bridge of Friendship has never been more supported. Just look at it. Now, also during the live stream, we may or may not have gotten enough knowledge essence to get Mechanism. Let's roll that clip. Code, I have CDG. eight unspent knowledge points. Oh, we're just so close. We just so need close. one singular knowledge star. The and question is, mechanism. do I have the Benny? Oh, I have the Benny boys. Extraordinary. Surround it with the power of the delicious vault diamonds. And then combine that with the power of the shards of knowledge to create... <laughs> The knowledge. Where are you? Oh, hi. <laughs> Nom. All oh, right. That's nine. Let's do it together. All right. Here we go. Mechanism unlocked. Oh, just in time for Ready Ranger to be up a super member. Hey. Thank you so much for the support. You've made it to the video. Let's go, guys. Mechanism is unlocked. Unlocked. That's right. We unlocked mechanism. Speaking of unlocking mechanism, hi, Code. How's your mechanism? Hi. 
mechanism. I haven't done anything yet, but we're getting ready to get started on that, so I'm As excited. Am I. Apparently, when you're in a team research, only the person who researches the thing gets the transmog. I'm gonna give code a favor and help transmog. Ooh, whoa, the mechanism. It looks, oh, it looks even cooler the than the last suit. season. All right, helmet first, transmog. There you go, you got the full mecha suit. I wanna look at oh, it. Oh yeah, look at this. Oh, 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 there we oh, go. Oh, you're a spaceman. Look at that, we got <laughs> oh, the so hazmat shiny. suit and the space suit. That's pretty cool. <laughs> this is great. I just need to get rid of the... Uh, uh, oh, the, the shiny shine? The shiny shinies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's see if I got some runes here. Oh, yeah. Now, now you're looking good. snazzy. <laughs> Look at this. Oh, this man. It's the perfect combo. All right. Well, thank you very much, CWG. I appreciate your uh, assisting me in the transmogrification process. No problem. <laughs> I'm always down to transmogrify. <laughs> All right. We'll talk with you soon. Yep. Later. Well, it was nice to help code. And yeah, we have mechanism unlocked. Also, there's a random chest here. What's in it? Oh, that's a lot of cakes. Thanks, C-dubs, from Zinji. Wanted to give you a gift you can't refuse. Free cake. Thank you for helping me on my second vault run. Aw, how adorable. Actually, I think cakes can show up in the vaulter, so this is pretty good. So, we're gonna have to make some machines for mechanism, and I've been wondering on where I want to build it, but I got the perfect spot. I've been building a secret basement below the orb. You can go up into the orb, but now you can go down into the secret mechanism room. I had a lot of fun building this thing. The floor is made of algal bricks and overgrown algal bricks. And all the algal algae we've been getting from the vaults, we've been getting the bricks and the blend. Nice. Also in the ceiling, we're using sun metal, which also comes from blocks from the vault. So I figured if we're getting all these building materials from the vault, might as well use them, right? You could also make these algal lanterns, which is just glowstone on algal brick. How cool. The floor is made with some cobblestone bricks. Yep, that's a thing. And deep slate, the wall is just a mixture of different types of calcite walls. And this is one of my like favorite wood blocks. This is a spruce beam. You can make a beam by combining two stripped logs and it just has that smooth like supporting texture. I love the beams. And last but not least, in the roof we have these gold ore stairs and slabs. And yes, these are crafted with actual stone bricks and gold. And over here, it's the lapis version. Lapis and stone brick. Then in each cardinal direction, we got gold bars, which is crafted like iron bars, but with gold, with a little bit of lava behind it. I think this room looks pretty cool. Well, so you want to get started in mechanism? The first machine you're going to need is the metallurgic infuser, which costs some chromatic steel, vault diamonds, fern eye, and an osmium block. And yeah, I believe we're missing osmium. Let's see if we have any osmium ore. Wow, we have one. Great. I'm going to have to do some mining. Well, I already have a bunch of mine shafts down there in the mine, so I figured I might as well just walk through them until I maybe find some osmium exposed somewhere. Like, look at that. There's an ore up there. Is that osmium? No idea. Nope, it's silver, apparently. Oh, I found our first osmium. Is it just one? Oh, no, it is two osmium. Let's go. So this is the ore that I'm looking for. I'm just going to run around and mine whatever I can find. And I'll jump back in when it's time to fortune. All right, guys, here's all the osmium I gathered. A little bit over a stack. Now we need to get a lot of this stuff because mechanism, this is like the main metal of mechanism. Each machine frame, I believe, costs like a block of osmium. We ended up getting 188 chunks, not bad. Now what's exciting is as we get into mechanism, we can make ways to get even more out of our chunks. All right, so now we should have everything we need to make our very first metallurgic infuser. Except for another uh, furnace, apparently. There we go! A first machine! All right, so I moved our metallurgic infuser down here. It is on a power cable from Mechanism, which is crafted with a redstone block and some chromatic steel. A little bit expensive, but that's okay. I moved our power furnace down here, which is providing power to this cable. And you may be like, why the heck did you make this metallurgic infuser? What do you need it for? We need it to make other things. For instance, we need the enrichment chamber. So that way we can get more ores out of our ores. If we look right here, three chunks can turn into four dust and you can smelt the dust into an ingot. But in order to get the enrichment chamber, first of all, we need a steel casing. It's going to require an osmium block, which is fine. We just mined a bunch of that stuff. 
And we're gonna need a steel block. And steel is made by smelting steel dust, which comes from the metallurgic infuser. See, we made our way back to the machine. And if y'all haven't figured out now, mechanism is all about crazy machines and crazy recipes, but that's why I love it. I love the challenge. But don't worry guys, this is mechanism for dummies here. Step one, put in some coal. Great. Step two, put in some iron. And what will happen is it will consume 10 carbon, and then you just run the enriched iron through the machine again. And now it makes steel dust. There we go. I just have to repeat this process a bunch of times. Also, how expensive are the speed upgrades? Because these machines are too dang slow. Oh, in order to upgrade it, you need tinted glass. Nice. The game is actually forcing us to use amethyst shards. You love to see it. But you also need this infused alloy, which is also in the metallurgic infuser, but instead of coal, it uses Laramar. How cool is that? The vault mod is actually integrated with a mechanism. I mean, it's called infused type craft tweaker vault Laramar. So it looks like they need to polish up a few of these names here. But I don't know, it's so cool that you're using the vault mod and mechanism together. It's like they're dancing in perfect harmony. So I'm gonna keep crafting steel. I'm actually probably gonna make another one of these metallurgic infusers for the Laramar dust. Cause I like to have one infuser for each type of material. So I don't keep mixing up the uh, the catalyst. I think, I think this is called a catalyst carbon. I, I don't know. I just work here, okay? You know, there's something ironic about using coal to make steel and then using the coal to power the thing to make the coal into steel. It's like coal steelception. Also, I went ahead and made another metallurgic infuser so that way we can start making these alloys that we need for upgrades. Now, what's interesting is the type of Laramar gem that you put in will actually affect the amount you get out. It's kind of like going to Sam's Club. You want to buy in bulk. So if you put in the extraordinary Laramar, you'll see we get 250 millibuckets. Mm. I mean, this makes it a bit easier to see. A Laramar gem normally gives you 10. A perfect Laramar will give you 50, which is worth five. Then the extraordinary will give you 250, which is worth 25 Laramar, even though it only took 16 to craft. You see where I'm going here? So you always want to put extraordinaries in here. So you save your gems. And now if we put in some chromatic iron, we should be making some alloys. Nice. All right, so the other thing we need for the enrichment chamber is these basic control circuits which require chromatic steel infused with Laramar. Now this uses 160 per thing, oh wow. I can now see why people are telling me this is gonna take a million Laramar. Like, I don't think one extraordinary Laramar is even enough for two. No, it's not. You know what, how about we just fortune up all of our Laramar ore? Let's just get it out of the way. All right, it's fortuning time. I'm standing on a massive pile of ores here and it's all Laramar. So let's fortune it up and this should be pretty satisfying. Oh yeah. This is like our first big ore fortune pile of the season so far. And you know we're probably gonna be doing a lot of these. How much Laramar do y'all think we're gonna get from this? Oh, we also have more Laramar in our attic, but that's like our emergency reserves Laramar. I wanna try to not use those if possible. And let's see, we ended up with about 400 Laramar gems, nice. That should at least hold us over for a bit, but something tells me we may need even more than this. And there we go, we should have everything we need to make the enrichment chamber. We just have to make the machine frame, which is a block of steel and a block of osmium. Decently expensive, but doable. And there we go. We got an enrichment chamber. And we'll plop this guy right down here. The way the enrichment chamber works is pretty simple. You put three raw osmium in or three any raw chunks. It, it could even be chromatic iron. And it'll spit out four dust. In which you can then smelt the four dust into ingots. Now mechanism does have a redstone furni. Looks like we'll just need some more osmium, steel, and laramar, and we should be able to make this thing not too hard. There we go, I went ahead and made the energized smelter, wasn't too hard, and now we can smelt using power. Which takes about as long as a furnace, but we can put upgrades in these guys later to make it real fast. Now the next machine we're gonna want is the crusher, which is a pretty similar recipe with a couple lava buckets. And as you can see, the crusher has 73 pages of recipes. It could do a lot of stuff and things. For instance, you can crush plant matter into biofuel to use for a biofuel generator. You could turn wool into string, pretty useful. It can even unwax your copper. Wow. 
It could also crush gravel into sand and cobblestone into gravel, so that's another big use. And you could even use the crusher to turn two vault stone into one chipped rock, so we don't even need our pulverizing pick anymore. So I'm gonna get everything we're gonna need for the crusher, and we'll be right back. And there we go, we got everything we need for our crusher. Let's go. Just like that, we have all the basic mechanism machines. Honestly, it's just nice to smelt stuff using power again. Now, I will say, this uh, Furnerator starter variety kind of sucks. It, it can barely keep up with power in any of the machines, and I've already put in energy upgrades into all of these guys. So that means this Furnerator sucks. Sorry, Furnerator. It's quite efficient, though. It's only gone through, like, one and a half blocks of coal. Very efficient, but not a lot of power. I mean, look how slowly that's filling up. So now that we have mechanism unlocked, I want to get into the thermo generators. These are from the power mod, but they consume water and we're able to use mechanism to put water in it. Uh, but we'll get to that later. For now, we just have to make the thermo generator. So I'm going to go ahead and craft all the stuffs and things we need. We're going to need tons of dielectric paste again. No surprise. And I'll be right back once I got everything crafted. Oh, wow. Each of these thermo plates require four blaze lanterns, which is like a lot of blaze rods. Oh no, do I have enough blaze rods? Please say yes. Yes, you'll love to see it. And there we go, we got our thermo generator starter and it generates 20 Fe per tick, which is the same amount of power as the furnerator. So we're gonna have to upgrade this guy, which honestly, the upgrade is pretty much the same stuff we used to craft it, so that's not too bad. Well guys, I'm just chilling at this blaze spawner because I need more blaze rods for those blaze lanterns. And I couldn't help but notice, look, it's my old corpse. It says November 30th. This is my old corpse from like episode one. And look, it still has a tropical stew in it. Delicious. Yeet. I'm taking that tropical stew. Ah, uh, tastes much more delicious off your own dead body. All right, so I got everything we need here to upgrade our thermo generator. It's gonna go from making 20 FP per tick to 60. It's gonna triple the power output. Now we could upgrade it again with some energized steel, hmm. But I think we'll wait on that for now. So in order to make this work, we're gonna need a sink, some mechanical pipes, and a configurator. Now the sink is expensive. It's gonna require an infinite water bucket and two of that black chromatic steel that's so expensive. So let's go ahead and make it, and boom. We got ourselves a sink and an extra infinite water bucket. So I believe the way this works is you have to put a hot liquid underneath it, such as magma. Then you put the thermo generator next to it. Cool. Now it needs water, which means we can put the sink up here, attach a mechanical pipe to it, and use the configurator to suck the water out. And now it's going into here, and I believe it's producing power. Yep, it is. You'll love to see it. So now we don't have to rely on burning through all our coal anymore. We have pretty much infinite 60 FP per tick. And if we ever need more in the future, we can keep upgrading this thing, but it will get more and more expensive the more you upgrade it. All right, guys, I think that's enough mechanism for one day, but we made really good progress and a really good start into mechanism. Heck yeah. Also, did I mention the colossal chest is even bigger? Our three by three colossal chest filled up, so I've upgraded it to a four by four. Look at the size of this chest. And yeah, this thing used to be all the way full and now it's like only halfway full. Let's go. All right, let's get into the vaults. I wanna hit level 22 from this vault. We also have a bounty, which is to just complete any vault and we get a ton of vault silver. So let's just do that. Let's hop into the vault. This is a level 20 vault with one curse. Oh no, the curse is explosive. Run. Explosive means there's random TNT that will blow up around you and you will definitely die. So let's not do that one. All right, this one has two curses. Are you serious? Someone actually left me a comment that I should save the ones with two curses and I could just turn them into vault dolls, which is a pretty smart idea, actually. Oh no, we're out of chipped vault rock to make a new crystal. Good thing we could use our brand new crusher to crush the vault stone down into chipped rock. Let's go. All right, let's hope that the vaulter's nice to us. Cobble leaves redstone leather, easy. Cobble leaves redstone leather, boom. Nice. Come on, soul flame, be kind to me. All right, only one curse, it better not be explosive. In we go. All right, we got rotten, that means we can't eat vault fruit. All right, that's fine, that's much better. So in this vault, we have three obelisks to find and we do have to complete the vault. Now I've never fought in the boss by myself, so that's Kind of scary, but I'm willing to give it a try. I think we might be strong enough, maybe. 
Oh, looks like we got Obli 1 right down there. Skirt! Ow, there's an archer! Ooh. Oh, look, look, there's a tier 2 bob. See that? That husk has like a bone face. They have more health, they do more damage. Be careful of the tier 2 bobs. Oh boy. All right, so while I'm looking for Obli, let's take a look at some of the comments you guys left on last video. There's a very popular comment of me to visit Norway and the the Fjords. I'm joking. I know it's not pronounced Fjord. It's pronounced like Fjord. Ooh, another tier two guy. Crazy. And you know, I think the Fjords are very beautiful. But they're honestly so beautiful that in the pictures I see of them, they don't even look real, right? Like, y'all will have to let me know in the comments. If you've not been to Norway, the, the picture just doesn't look real, right? It's fake. Y'all say Ohio doesn't exist. I don't think Norway exists. But I would love to go there, yes. All right, next up, we got a comment of someone saying, what if we tell Code about the fish farm? Well, I think Code might be on to us, considering the prank he did to us last episode. I feel like it might be in revenge of putting that, you know, the big mouth Billy fish shop. I can see why he may be upset about that. All right, next comment. Someone asks, what is your strategy for looting the vault? Now, it, it will depend. Uh, what is my bounty? My main goal of each vault is to pretty much complete the bounty because the rewards are so good. So if it's like a monolith or an obelisk one, then I'm going to go look for those first. And then anytime I have in between, I'll use that for looting. Now the POIs are mostly at the top and the bottom of the room. So like there's a few at the top, like you can kind of see where the ledges are. But if you want to just play it safe, just go to the bottom of each room and there's going to be POIs down here. Ah, that one's a Thanos altar, not an obelisk. Otherwise, opening chests, throwing the items out using your Q key or whatever your throw item key is. And as long as you got a magnet with some double pouches, you don't have to worry about your inventory filling up. So it's pretty nice. All right, next question. Am I a cat or a dog person? Now, I've grown up my entire life with dogs. I think my parents got a dog when I was like 12 or 13 or something. I've lived with small dogs, big dogs, you name it. Oh gosh, Wild West room. We're going to have to be careful here. Woo! Now, but here's the thing. I've never had a cat before, and I think cats are, like, adorable. And they, they have some of the funniest videos on the internet. I do have a friend who has a cat, and every time I go over there, I'm like, Where's where's Jessica? Let me see the cat. <laughs> and apparently, he just got a couple more kitten. Wait, did we just find a dig site room? Yeah, I think we just found the Omega dig site room without the mobs. I think. Let's do a little bit of vein mining. Now, I hear that the dig site rooms in 118 aren't as good as the ones in 116 and they mainly just have wooden chest and I guess I can kind of see that huh yeah well I'm gonna keep looking for obli and I may come back here but yeah from what I've heard dig site rooms just aren't as good as they used to be unless we had a way to like remove a lot of sand at once but right now our vein mine's only 10 blocks Ooh, there's an obli right there let's go oh yeah cat or dog person I, I don't even know I like them both Stircat loves sending me pictures of her cat. If you guys join the Discord, you can see uh, pictures of Stircat's cat. All right, so we got a comment here that says no one ever mentions Canada. Oh, poor Canada. And you know what's funny? Canada's only like a four hour drive from where I live. And I have my passport. So like, I don't know why I haven't visited Canada yet. All I gotta do is drive to Niagara Falls and just cross the river, right? Maybe because I don't know where to go in Canada. If you're a Canadian, tell me somewhere cool to visit that's sort of near Lake Erie. That way I don't have to go that far. <laughs> well, once again, thank you to y'all who left questions last episode. If y'all have any questions for me to answer sometime in the future, leave it in the comments section. Oh my goodness, a bartering room! Let's go! This is why I carry all this vault platinum and vault gold on me. Let's see what's for sale. What? The pedestal's empty. What the heck? Nothing to buy in this one? I'll keep looking around. Ooh, a knowledge shard. I assume that's for six vault silver? Let's give it a test. Give me the knowledge. Yes! Hey, I'll take a knowledge shard. Oh, we got a gorgeous jewel for only one vault gold, so let's buy that one up. That's the one that adds shoveling. Nice. I think we have two of those now. Well, I guess that's all that's for sale in this room. A shame I wanted to buy more. Buy all the things. There she is, the last obelisk. I'm a bit nervous because I have a... Not fought at a boss this version by myself yet. I know, but I guess it's time to be a big boy and try to take it on. By be a big boy, I mean put a lot of water around and wait for my mana to recharge. <laughs> Maybe I'll even take out a POI or two. 
69 mana. You know what? That's good enough. Let's summon in the boss. I'm just gonna tank it, yo. I'm gonna tank it. Try to stay out of his range. Oh, no, 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 no. Alright, this may be a bad idea. <laughs> like, can I just hit him from a distance? Just stay slightly out of reach. Oh, he teleported behind me. He used that, like, anime move. Oh. Nani? We got him! <laughs> Whew. First boss kill by ourselves. I mean, it was intense. Look, let's take out that creeper. Oh yeah. We only got two seconds. We grab a vault diamond. 3000 XP, let's go. Is that enough for us to level up? We did it, let's go. And we get to claim our bounty crate. That's right, I've actually re-rolled all our bounties so they're all just complete a vault. It's like the easiest thing to do. Let's activate this one next. So we can pop a boss, pop a bounty. What do we get? A whole bunch of stuff. We get an unidentified relic fragment. Let's see which one it is. We got another Twitch emote number two. Great. We got some Laramar. Well, we know we're gonna need that. And we got that extra Gorgonite jewel. Cool. Now we have level 21. Ooh, a rare plus sword, common plus boots and a shield. Hopefully we get something good. We got boots with five armor. That's meh. Aw, our rare plus sword rolled like one of the lowest attack damages you could get. Lame. Ooh, but the shield has max block chance. Let's go. And 5% resistance. Maybe when this shield runs out of durability, we'll start using this guy. You know, I feel like we haven't gotten gear that's like too crazy OP yet. I mean, I guess the chest plate's pretty good with 12 armor and our sword is just amazing. I will say the sword is probably the best part of our entire setup. I love this thing. Now it's time for everyone's favorite part of the day, meme of the daytime. This meme comes from Ugly from the Discord. CWG, Sturcat, and Cod working hard on completing the monolith vault. Peeporp claiming his vault crate by entering and exiting the vault. <laughs> if you guys missed the live stream, we were running a co-op vault and Peeporp literally just joined the party, went into the vault, and since we had already completed the monoliths, Peep just left and claimed the prize. <laughs> solid meme, solid meme. And if you guys want to watch the VOD on the live stream, you can always go on the channel, click the live tab, and all the previous live streams are there. And with that, we're out of time for today's episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Make sure you're subscribed. CWG, out.